Hola, como estas? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another book recommendation video where I do, if you like this book, then I think you should check out this book as well. so excited to do. I absolutely love finding similarities in the books that I'm reading and picking up on vibes and thinking that if you like this kind of vibe then I have another book that can match that vibe. But before we do jump into the video I wanted to say a huge thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Vacation season is upon us which means new places, new people, and a whole bunch of new experiences. And what better time to take the opportunity to start to learn a new language? I think that learning a new language is such a great skill for just self-improvement reasons, for connecting with family, or if you have any travel plans abroad in the near future. I come from a very Mexican family. I know it might not look like it, but my whole family is Mexican, and a lot of them are able to speak Spanish fluently, and so I've always wanted to be able to communicate with some of my family members in Spanish. And Babbel is my favorite language app to use because I feel like it helps you in real-world conversations conversations. It's nice because they have short 10 minute interactive lessons so if you feel like you don't have enough time in the day to commit to lessons it's nice because they're quick, they're short, they're effective. I like that they have so many different ways to learn through the app and that all of their lessons are planned by real language speakers not by AI machines or algorithms and their speech recognition also helps you improve your accent and pronunciation which I think is also just really cool but not everyone learns in the same way and I like that Babbel really recognizes that with what they have have to offer because they not only offer lessons, they have podcasts, they have games, they have videos, like they make it really easy to learn. Here's a quick clip of me interacting with the app so you can see what it looks like. Soy Lucia. Mucho gusto. Yo soy Juan. Bienvenida. Gracias. So yeah, get 65% off your subscription when you use the link in my description. And thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the books. All right, so the first recommendation I have on this list is kind of like a two-parter because I think if you liked For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing, I highly recommend checking out They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. In both of these books, they both have academic settings and they both take place on the school campuses. And in both of these stories, we follow teachers specifically because in They never learn. We follow this woman who's a professor at this college, but she's also a serial killer and she's kind of like taking revenge against men who have wronged her. She's kind of like the baddest bitch you've ever seen, basically. And then in this book, For Your Own Good, we're following this man named Teddy who has won Teacher of the Year and he's teaching at this like prestigious private school. But he's also like a little shady, you know, a little untrustworthy, you know, reading from his point of view is very interesting. And I just think if you like reading about a teacher on a school campus doing some shady things and doing some like mm -hmm, questionable things, then I think you would like either of these books. You know, I think both of these books are really great. I do think They Never Learn is the superior book out of these two. So if you're only interested in checking out one, I would recommend that one over this one. But I do think this one is also just very unique and very fun. I think For Your Own good is a little bit more fun and lighthearted of a book so if that's something you're looking for I would recommend this one over They Never Learn but then I would also recommend if you liked They Never Learn and you want something else like another thriller that has that same good for her energy then I would recommend The Collective by Alison Galen and this one I would recommend because this is another thriller but in this group we're following a group of moms who these moms find each other and they connect because all of their children have been brutally taken from them against their will so like either murdered or like something happened to their children where it was an awful death at the hands and at the cost of somebody else like somebody else is responsible for their children's deaths and so they find this online forum called the collective where you can basically like hire out other women to get revenge for you know your child's death and so like that is basically the premise of this book like it is so wild and it just reminds me a lot of they never learn because it's like women getting revenge for things that have happened to them and like that have wronged them and in this one it, it just involves these moms with their children so it's like a unique kind of take on it but yeah I highly recommend checking out all three of these thrillers I think they're all really great and they just reminded me a lot of each other my next one is going to be if you like
liked Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, then I think you should check out We Need to Do Something by Max Booth III. Both of these are, you know, horror novellas that are just so unhinged and bizarre and just like by the ending you're just like, what the fuck did I just read? But like in the best way. Something that I think is super unique about the way that this book is written in particular is that we're just reading a bunch of email exchanges back and forth between these two women. Like that's pretty much what this entire story is, but then it just gets really unhinged and really disturbing and by the end you're kind of sitting there like what the fuck did I just read? And then in We Need to Do Something in this book we're following this family who is like on the verge of self-destruction basically and they all huddle in the bathroom together because there's a tornado warning and then they get trapped in the bathroom together and it's basically just like them going fucking insane and I just I don't know I feel like these books like the vibes reminded me of each other I just think if you liked the kind of weird ass like what the fuck vibe of this I think you should definitely check out this it has that same kind of energy for me next up I think if you enjoyed The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson I think you should check out Kill Creek because these are both horror novels that I absolutely loved I really loved both of them and they both involve one of my favorite things which is haunted houses but even more specifically something that these both have in common is that they involve, you know, these people coming to these haunted houses to kind of test out whether or not they're actually haunted and like whether or not paranormal activities are actually happening here. If you're unfamiliar with The Haunting of Hill House but you know about the show like I did, like I personally saw the show before I read the book and the show is nothing like the book. The book is actually really different because in the book we're following this guy who's a doctor who he is looking for evidence of a haunting and so he invites all of these people to stay with him at Hill House overnight to kind of see if Hill House is actually haunted or not and that's kind of like the premise of this book and it just reminds me a lot of Kill Creek because in Kill Creek um, this is known for being like the most haunted house in America like Kill Creek is and in this book they're inviting four authors, four horror authors specifically, to come to Kill Creek and stay there on the night of Halloween and they're gonna be live streaming it. And it's just like the coolest premise ever, right? Like I love the idea of four horror authors all coming together to stay in this haunted house to see if it's actually haunted. It just definitely reminded me of The Haunting of Hill House and I know a lot of people when they read The Haunting of Hill House have said that they've been disappointed by it or that they wanted more from it or they, they didn't think it was creepy or spooky enough. And so if that's the case for you, if you felt like that when you read this, I would highly recommend checking out Kill Creek because Kill Creek definitely delivered on the spookiness for me and I personally loved both. So like I do think it's possible to love both. The next recommendation that I have is also another like two-part kind of recommendation because I think if you liked Long Bright River by Liz Moore, I think you should definitely check out False Witness by Karen Slaughter. And the main reason is that I just think these books were so similar for me, like so freaking similar because in both of these stories, these are both kind of like thrillers, but I would say Long Bright River, it reads more of like a slow burn kind of like literary mystery, whereas False Witness reads a little bit more like a typical mystery thriller in my opinion but both of these books are very dark and disturbing and the thing that I think these have in common the most is that we're following these sets of sisters we're following two sisters in both of these books and our main protagonist is dealing with the fact that her sister is a drug addict and kind of dealing with that and how difficult it can be and these books are just so similar because of that I do think though False Witness for me at least was a lot more dark and a lot more you know graphic and disturbing naturally because it's Karen Slaughter. I mean, come on now. Karen Slaughter is like the queen of like graphic violence and disturbing content in her books. So I think that's definitely the case with this one, even though I do think this one is not as bad as some of her other books, but at least in comparison here, um, I definitely think Long Bright River is a bit more easy to stomach. Um, but they just reminded me a lot of each other because of the plot kind of and like the connection that these sisters had like the sister relationships in particular just really reminded me a lot of each other so if you really liked the sister dynamic in Long Bright River I highly recommend checking out False Witness and vice versa but then I would also recommend if you also liked Long Bright River and especially like more like the writing style in this like the way it felt more like a literary slow burn kind of mystery for that reason alone I would recommend checking out Notes on an execution because this is another book that I think is getting a little bit mismarketed right now because I think calling both of these books thrillers is like a little bit of a stretch. I would honestly classify both of these books as kind of like slow burn, kind of more character driven, uh, you know, like mystery, literary fiction style writing kind of books. 
And this is a very particular genre that I'm finding for the most part I really enjoy. Like I know sometimes it can be a little bit disappointing if I'm not expecting it, but when I'm expecting it, I feel like this genre can really hit. And Notes on an Execution is one of my favorite books of the year. And there was just something about it that really reminded me of the writing that I loved in Long Bright River. Because Long Bright River is a book that I've read two times now. I'm honestly tempted to read it a third time because I don't know what it is about this. I just love it so fucking much. And this might be my favorite book that I've read so far this year. So clearly something about this writing style just really speaks to me. And in Notes on an Execution, we're basically following a serial killer who is on death row. And we get to hear about his life from the perspective of these three different women who were in his life. So it's like his mom, this girl that he knew in foster care, and then also the sister of the woman that he ends up with. So it's really interesting to like read about his life from the point of view of the women in his life. And yeah, I don't know. I just think if you liked Long Bright River, this one's definitely worth checking out. If you love Notes on an Execution, I would highly recommend checking out Long Bright River. All right, my next recommendation is going to be if you enjoyed The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, then I highly, highly recommend checking out one of the good ones. And one of the good ones is a book that I read earlier this year. I read it for my uh, reading books that Capricorns get recommended kind of video. And I'm so glad that I read it because I don't know if I ever would have read this book or even heard of this book if I didn't do that video. And this book just reminded me so much of The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And if you didn't know, both of these stories are young adult kind of like contemporary stories that touch on really relevant current things. They both have these running themes of police brutality and how often black people get mistreated by police. And I just think these things are so important to read because it's really eye-opening and just really educational and just kind of opens your eyes to like what's going on in the world. In The Hate You Give, I'm sure you've probably heard of this story at some point by now because this is such a popular book. But in this book, we're following this young girl named Star who witnesses her best friend getting murdered by a police officer for no reason. And then in one of the good ones, we're following the sister of this girl who was murdered by the police during a rally. I also think it's really interesting though because in one of the good ones, they especially touch on the fact that somebody shouldn't have to be good to deserve our respect or our sympathy, you know? Because like they talk a lot in this book about how her sister died and like, oh, it's such a shame because she was one of the good ones. And like, it, she shouldn't have to be one of the good ones to earn your sympathy about her death, you know? Like there's just a lot of really interesting conversation in this one as well. And I think it provides just as much good commentary as The Hate You Give for me. So I feel like this book deserves to be a lot more popular than it is because it has some really great commentary as well in this book. So if you enjoyed The Hate You Give, and you're looking for something to kind of impact you the same way that this one did, I would definitely recommend one of the good ones. All right, next up, I would recommend if you liked The Arrangement by Kirsten Modglin, then I think you should check out The Swap by Robin Harding. For me, okay, these are both thrillers, right? But for me, they were both about like three-star thrillers, like nothing super interesting or special. But I do think, you know, because The Arrangement is so hyped right now and everybody's talking about this book and how totally crazy and wild it is. And The Arrangement, is basically the situation where a husband and a wife make an agreement that one night a week they can like sleep with other people and basically they have this arrangement you know where they can do that and it's like it's fine in their marriage that they can have another partner for one night and then of course things go horribly wrong and it turns into a thriller naturally but then I also think if you liked that concept and you're looking for more thrillers with that similar kind of concept I would definitely recommend The Swap by Robin Harding because this one's also about this couple who they swap part with another married couple for like a period of time and then also things go terribly wrong and it turns into a thriller. I had fun reading both of these books, right? Like they're both fun, easy to read, quick thrillers so you can get through them very quickly. But I don't know, I think my personal preference is for The Swap by Robin Harding just because I do enjoy Robin Harding's writing a little bit more than Kirsten Modlin's writing. I don't know, I can never really fully connect with her books because like the writing just isn't my favorite. But Robin Harding, I just kind of love the situation she puts her characters in. Like all of her books are kind of like ridiculous and over the top, but like in a really fun way. So yeah, I would definitely check out The Swap if you have read The Arrangement and you're looking for something similar. Next up I have If You Enjoyed Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, aka one of my favorite books books of all time, then I think you should check out The Paris Apartment by Lucy Folly. And look at that, even these covers like match a little bit with the pink vibes, isn't that cute? But yeah, I think the reason um, why these books kind of remind me of each other is because they both take place mostly in apartment buildings. And for a lot of this book, 
for both of these books, you're wondering, is this apartment building haunted? What is going on? Can I trust the people in this building? What is happening to our main character? And they're just both really interesting and they don't actually have the same twist at the end. So you can enjoy both of them for being their own things, you know? Because in Lock Every Door, we're following this young woman named Jules, who is going to be living at the Bartholomew in New York City. And they're gonna be paying her to live there. And like very suspicious, very strange. And she's trying to figure out, is this building haunted? Is that why? Because there's like some freaky things going on. She also doesn't know if she can trust the neighbors. Like she doesn't know what's going on there. And she finds out that the woman that was living in her apartment before her went missing. And then in the Paris apartment, we're following this girl named Jess, who she goes to Paris to her brother's apartment and finds out that her brother has recently gone missing. But nobody in the building seems to want to say anything about it. They don't want to talk about it. And she's kind of just going about her own ways to try to figure out what the fuck happened to her brother. Both of these kind of, you know, they have the same kind of like creepy creepy building vibes. They have the same kind of like, can I trust anybody in this book? Can I even trust the protagonist? Like what is going on? And they're just so much fun. I obviously think Lock Every Door is the superior book out of these two. So if you're like, ooh, those both sound good. I want to read both. I would highly recommend Lock Every Door over the Paris apartment. But if you're looking for something to give you the same kind of like feelings of like, ooh, spooky apartment building and like, can't, I can't trust people, then I would definitely recommend checking out the Paris apartment. I thought it was a really fun time. All right, my next recommendation is going to to be if you enjoyed the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey and all of these fun shenanigan books, then I think you should check out The Good Lie by A.R. Torre because this is a collection of five short books. If you didn't know, this is a thriller series. These books are kind of known to be like a little bit ridiculous and just kind of fun, you know, because like they in this story, we're following this woman named Lana who's a serial killer and we kind of follow her journey as she's falling for this guy who is like the FBI agent who is assigned to her case. So it's very almost like that situation where, you know, she's murdering right under his nose and he doesn't know and they're together and it's like romance and it's action and it's he like it's intense but i think if you want something like this but a little bit more serious i think you would really like the good lie by a.r torre because in that book we're following a psychiatrist the girl she's a psychiatrist who's an expert on serial killers and then it's about how she's dating a defense attorney and they're kind of like working together to solve this case about serial killers so it's not exactly like as fun as the mindfuck series because you know in this book she's the actual serial killer so we get to see the killings and it's like kind of funny because she's like you know doing it right under his nose and he doesn't know but I think if you want something that's a little bit more serious but with similar vibes I do think The Good Lie is a good one to check out because it's not as like over the top as this series is but it's still like a really interesting thriller it's very thought-provoking and it has good characters and it also has that romance if you're looking for something that kind of has like a thriller but with some romance that you can root for and I personally was a much bigger fan of the romance happening in The Good Lie than I was of the romance happening in this series. Like I could not give two fucks about the romance in this series, but the romance in The Good Lie was pretty cute. Like I was kind of here for it. So, all right, the next one is going to be if you enjoyed Battle Royale, then I think you might like The Troop by Nick Cutter. And this connection was actually brought to my attention by my friend Mikay because me and Mikay were actually buddy reading Battle Royale. And after we were reading it, he was like, oh, this reminded me so much of The Troop. And I was like, oh my God, why didn't I make that connection sooner? Because Battle Royale, it's this classic, you know, it's a classic Japanese novel where we're following these middle schoolers who basically get dropped on this island and they're gonna have to compete to the death until there's only one of them left standing. And it sounds a lot like a lot of things that I've loved and that I've read, you know, like Squid Game. It also just, de it definitely sounds a lot like, you know, The Hunger Games, Maze Runner. Like there's a ton of things that I could compare this to. But also when you compare it to the troop, it's like, oh yeah, that also makes sense. Because if you like the idea of a bunch of kids being stranded on an island and basically something's killing them all, then I mean, hello, the troop. And this book, if you have no idea what this book is, this is a horror novel. And we follow this young group of Boy Scouts who they all get stranded on this island and then while they're on this island this this man like rolls up on the island and he's saying that he's so hungry and this whole thing just starts breaking out on the island and it's terrifying and it's disturbing and there's a lot of body horror in this. I mean, I think personally the troop is a lot more disturbing than Battle Royale even though they both have their moments of some pretty graphic violence, but the troop by far will be some of the most disturbing, disgusting, gross shit you will ever read in your life, but like in the best way. Like this is one of my favorite books of all time and it's not something I would just go around recommending to anyone, but like if you're looking for something that kind of has a similar like island and like kids getting killed on an island vibe, then I 
I think the troop just might be your book, you know? I think it might be, I think it might be a good move. All right, and the last recommendation that I have for you today on this list is that if you liked And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, I think you should definitely check out Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. And I don't say this lightly, you know, because I know it's so easy to compare everything to And Then There Were None or to Agatha Christie. Like everybody wants to compare themselves to Agatha Christie these days, but I feel like you would actually probably really enjoy Daisy Darker if you enjoy like Agatha Christie style kind of like thrillers, you know, because Agatha Christie's kind of known for having like a huge cast of characters and then one by one they start getting killed off until you fi finally get the reveal of like who the killer is and it's supposed to be like one of the best plot twists where you could never see it coming. And I feel like Daisy Darker did that for me, you know? I feel like it actually lives up to the Agatha Christie comparison because this book was just so much fun. And it is a situation where, you know, these family members start getting picked off one by one and you're trying to figure out who the killer is. And this book also just has the best freaking vibes possible because it takes place on an island and there's like a storm and it takes place on the night of October 30th going into Halloween morning. And so the vibes are just immaculate in this book, like so freaking good. It has the same kind of like island you know kind of vibes from this one that I remember and it's just so good and this one does have a really shocking plot twist at the end that I did not see coming but it felt like a fresh and like new take on this trope it's so often now I see on thrillers this like trope of oh they're all getting picked off one by one like who could it be but I feel like this was such a refreshing and kind of different take on this kind of typical trope that I just really fucking loved it I just loved it so much I thought it was so good so yeah this one comes out at the end of the month it comes out August 30th so I saved the best for last so definitely be sure to check out Daisy Darker if you're an Agatha Christie person or fan or even if you're not you know give Daisy Darker a go because it's one of my favorite thrillers of the year so yes. All right those are all of the different book recommendations that I have for you today so let me know if you agree with any of these book comparisons let me know if you disagree and also let me know if I convinced you to check any of these books out because you know that is the reason I make these videos so that would be cool to know and as always thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon soon with a new video. Bye!